All right, adventurers. Welcome to Alt Play. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at Picto Picks. We're going to be taking a look at Picto Picks. Uh, it is a game that works a lot like Pie Cross, something I played on the channel from time to time. I've done a few tutorials on how to play it. Uh, and this game was actually sent to me by the developers to check out and show on the channel. So in the description below, as always, I'll have more information on how you can find PictoPix, as well as information from the developers themselves, in case you want to follow them on social media. Um, I'm pretty sure it works just like Picross, from what I've seen from screenshots. But I'm going to do introduction, and we'll see. We'll see if that's the case, all right? Uh, let's go novice, because it won't let me go expert. Okay, yes, uh, it works just like Picross, just like your average game of Picross. It's a puzzle game which involves revealing a picture by filling in the squares on a grid. The numbers on top and on the left-hand side of the grid help finding which squares should be filled in. Uh, so if we take a look at this side, the, the very left grid, it has numbers at the top and then numbers across the left side. Those numbers tell you how many squares are filled in in a row. So, for example, this five means that five squares are filled in in a row when you when you look at this column here. I shouldn't say in a row. Uh, se se sequentially, let's go with sequentially. Five squares in order are are filled in. Now, there's only it's a five by five grid. That means it goes across five squares and it goes down five squares. So that means for this five column, every square in that column should be filled in. You can see that right here. Playing the game is easy. Just click on the square to fill it in. So it's teaching me the controls right now. To empty a square, click on it again. Oop, there we go. All right. Now this five, once again, five means in a five by five square, if there is a five, that means every square in that row or column should be filled in. Two, two. Okay, so five means Five squares in order. Five squares sequentially are filled in. Two means that two squares sequentially are filled in. So what does it mean if there's both numbers there? That means there's at least one square in between the two, the two and then the two that aren't filled in. There has to be at least one square of a gap. So we have two, at least one square not filled in, and then two more. We have two, at least one square, and then two more. So we can see already that these two are filled in and these two are filled in. Uh, let's see. When the right squares have been filled in on the line, it's wise to mark the empty squares. You can mark it with a right click. And that's pretty much all there is to pick cross. It's, it's pretty, much, pretty simple like that. We can look at this one as well. There's three squares and then there's one square. So there's three squares that are filled in. There's at least one square in between that isn't. And then there's one more that is. Once again... You can see it right there. So we have three, one, and one. Fill in this line. Now this would be in reverse. It's one square that's filled in. At least one square that's not. And then three squares that are. So we have one, at least one square that's not, and we're left with three. All right, this one, we have one, one, one. One square that is, at least one square that isn't, one square that is, at least one square that isn't, and then one square. So we have one, one, and one. Oh, it wants me to do the X's as well. Okay. And now fill in this one. We have zero. That means nothing in this row is filled in. Sometimes a set of squares can be put in different places on the line. In this case, you should count the squares to be filled in from one end and then from the other and only fill in squares which are common in both groups. Okay, so let's see Let's see if I can explain what it's saying. Okay, so this row has three, at least one square that isn't filled in, and then four that are. Okay? So it's you can't really look at that and figure it out the same way we could do the ones that had five squares. So what you can do is you can look at it from one side. You can put everything to the extreme left and then put everything to the extreme right. And everything that has every, let's see how, how to explain this. In both instances, whichever squares are filled in in both instances, that means that they have to be filled in. There's no other way it can be arranged. So for example, we have three, four. 
So that means three squares that are filled in, at least one that isn't, and then four more that are. So we have three here, at least one, four more that are, and then we have these two here because we're doing it all the way to the far left. Now, it doesn't have to be this way. It, it, the game, does, the, the, the way the rules are set up, it's not that it has to be this way. For example, this, these four could be all the way to the right, and these could still be here to the left. Or it can be like the one below it where we do it in reverse order. So it says from the right side, we have four that have to be squared, colored in, at least one square that isn't, and then three that are. So we could have it this way where we have four, at least one that isn't, and then three more. Now, these are both extremes. It can't get any more extreme than these two. In both cases, this square is filled in and these two squares are filled in. That means in the final, in the answer, in the correct answer, this one and these two definitely will be filled in. There's no other way to go about it. You can't arrange these two numbers with their squares any other way and have it make sense. Using this method, which squares can be filled in? Okay, so we have four, and it's five squares here. So once again, it we don't know it looking 100%. But we can figure out which ones definitely have to be filled in. So if we look at extreme left, one, two, three, and four would be colored in. These four. If we look at extreme right, one, two, three, and four will be colored in. These four. Now, using that method, there are three squares that in both scenarios will be colored in. One, two, and three. We don't mark these with X's because we don't know that they aren't colored in. Using this, which ones can be filled in? Three. Okay. One, two, three for the extreme left. And one, two, three for the extreme right. Using using both scenarios, this is the only square that is colored in on both of them. Which squares can be filled in? Okay. Let's see. Oh. Oh. So I can press the mouse to say to just get stuff visually okay so that helps we have one and then two that means there's one square that's colored in at least one square that isn't and then two more that are so we have one come on there we go this one let's say at least one that's not colored in and then two more come on all right now this is the extreme left let's look at the extreme right for the extreme right we have one and two at least one that isn't and then one more so the only overlap is this square here. All right. So that's that's very typically the basics of PictoPix or Pic Pi Cross as a whole. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's play some puzzles. Let's do us some puzzles. Difficulty level. Uh, novice. All hints are enabled. Intermediate. Some hints are enabled. Expert. No hints are enabled. I kind of want to do expert because I don't like re relying on hints for this. It, it's... It's one of my, my things I do on my free time. I like to, I like to actually do this for fun. So I'm gonna do expert. Now if it gets too if it's hard, I'm gonna turn it down. But I'm not I don't want hints. I don't want hints in this. Uh, let's do the first. Is it there we go. Okay, let's do the first puzzle. Okay, so this is a five by five. Uh, it's got a timer in the top right corner. We're not gonna worry about the timer. I don't worry about the timer. It's not a race. Alright. So let's see. Using what we what we've learned, where where's a good place to start? There's there's many places we can start. There's no real wrong place to start at, but what what do we know? Let's look at this puzzle and see what we know. I'll give you guys a few seconds to to look at it yourself. What do we know using the numbers? Okay, we know a few things. Uh if this is 0, that means there's no square in this uh column. That should be colored in. So we go ahead and mark the whole thing down with X's. And the same is true about this zero. There's no square in this column that should be colored in. All right. So we already have a good amount of the, the board, the puzzle, cleared. We also have this five. We can use this five. Uh, if it's a five and it's a five by five puzzle, five squares across and five squares down, that means that every square in this column should be colored in we're already making progress we're already making progress now this square uh, i'm sorry this column helps us find out a lot about a few rows this row has a one if this row has a one and this square is already colored in then this row is finished and the same could be said about this row 
in this row. All right, that doesn't leave as many options, and that's that's good. That's actually really good. We don't want a lot of options. Now we have two columns left and two rows left. So let's look at the rows. The first row has a three, which means three squares consecutively have to be colored in. So we have one. Let's go backwards. Two and three. And then we have another three. Three squares consecutively have to be colored in. Let's go one, two, and three. Bam. We out here solving puzzles. What is it? It's a clamp. It's a clamp. All right. So let's see. We get awards for each puzzle. Uh, you get one one crown for solving the puzzle. You get two crowns for solving it with hints disabled. And you get three crowns for solving it with hints disabled and no errors or almost no errors. Perfect. We, we're on the roll here. We're going to do this one. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. And each picture should, I'm sorry, each puzzle should make a picture when it's done. It's typically, that's how you solve it, how you know you did you did good. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can change the music so that it doesn't play like a million songs, a million different songs. Nope, it looks like I can't, uh, in fact, I can't affect that one. It's okay. It's okay. Because it, I know this is going through like a billion different songs. <laughs> It's fine. Okay, so this is our next puzzle. This is our next puzzle. Uh, let's see. I'll give you guys a few seconds to look at this one. Where, where's a good place to start? Once again, there's really no bad place to start, but some places are better than others. Some give you definite information, while others, you have to do a little bit of work to find it. Okay. Where's a good place to start? Okay. So, we have zeros. When you have a zero, you can go ahead and kill every single square in that row or column. In this case, it's the rows. Uh, we also have a five. Now, this is a five by five puzzle. Five squares across, five squares down. So that means this five row would be all colored in. We also have a three and a one. You remember how that works, right? Three squares ha in a row have to be colored in. There's at least one square in between the two that isn't colored in. And then we have a one here. So that means three, at least one not colored in, and then three, oh, one more colored in. So let's see. We have three, at least one that's not colored in, and then one more. Perfect. All right. Let's look at this three row. This row with three, I should say. Three squares colored in. So we'll do the extreme left and the extreme right situation again. Extreme left would be one, two. Oh, I can mark it. One, two. Come on, come on, come on. And three. And then extreme right would be one, two, and three. In both scenarios, this is the only square that's colored in. All right. Let's see. So according to this three row, it could either be here, these three. It could be these three, or it could be these three. Let's use the columns for a little bit of help. This column says one, and we already have one colored in, so we can go ahead and kill that one. And this column says two, and we already have two colored in, so we can kill that one as well. That only leaves us these three squares. All right. Hey, it's a coffee cup. It's pretty dope. And we got all three. We got all three. That's pretty dope. Another one. Let's do another one. All right. Okay. Give you guys a little bit of time to figure this one out for yourself. Where's a good place to start? What I what I used to do, uh, typically what you'll do is you can Google. It's either pit cross or nonogram puzzles. You can Google puzzles to do for yourself on pen and paper, which is actually a lot more fun to me. I like doing on pen and paper. But what I used to do, since I didn't have a printer to print it out, I would take grid paper, find the puzzles, replicate the numbers in order as well as the grid size and then do the puzzle myself it's the same thing it's pretty fun it's pretty fun okay so let's see where's a good place to start we don't have any zeros we don't have any zeros but we do have a five a five and a five by five puzzle means that we need to go ahead and color all these in we have another five here in the five in this row the fourth row from the top so let's go ahead and color all those in as well 
Let's see. Anything else? Is there anything else we can use just yet? We know that this column only has one colored in, and it already does, so we can close out the rest. We can do the same for this column, and we can do the same for this row because it already has one colored in, and also this row. And now we're left with threes. We're left with a bunch of threes. This column has three. Here's one already colored in, so let's count backwards. One, two, three. And the same for this column. Three. All right. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. All right. As you get better with these, as you get better with doing pit cross puzzles, uh, you, you kind of should be faster. You shouldn't need to think so much. Okay, uh, how many zeros, how many fives, do we have any colored in, any filled out all the way? It should become a little bit natural. Like, you should be able to fly through these. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. I like, I love these puzzles. I could do these all day, so I'm going to limit myself. This one looks like it'll be fun. This one looks like it'll be fun. Okay. I'll give you guys just a few seconds on this. Okay, a great place to start. On this five by five, it would be zero. These are all gone. And five, again, five by five means that this entire column with five is colored in. All right. So let's look at this row with three, one. We have three colored in. There's at least one square in between that isn't, and then one more that's colored in. So we have three here, a gap of one, and then one more. All right. And then the same could be said for this row and this row. Okay. Then we have one and three. One square colored in, at least one square that isn't, and then three more that are. So here's one. One square that isn't, and then three more. And how about right here? Three, one. Three squares that are colored in, gap, and then one that isn't. Three and one. Perfect. It's the number 21. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. We did good today. We did what? Four puzzles? So we got all all three on all four? <laughs> we got all three crowds on all four puzzles. So we got what? 12 puzzles? It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. All right, guys. That's going to do it for Picto Picks today. I had fun. This game's this this is like what I like to do in my free time, my, my pastime. Like when it's time to chill out and relax. I like to do these puzzles from time to time. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of math. I love me some math. Uh, once again, all the information will be in the description below where you can check out Picto Picks for yourself. Okay? Uh, and I'll catch you guys later with more. If you guys enjoyed seeing this game and would love to see more, then all you have to do is hit that red button below this video. That's the subscribe button. And I'll do my best to make sure you guys can see more episodes of games like Picto Picks as well as everything else that Alt Play has to offer. Thank you for checking this out, and I'll catch you later with more here on Alt Play.